Here's a height map that we produced previously. Uh, let's uh, run an experiment on this uh, and process the map as though it has only one maximum uh, elevation. We have varying elevations because of the uh, different mountain ranges in this map. So let's just treat it with one max area. I'm going to create a threshold layer to find the highest point. I'll use it to set the white point on the map. We'll set then the black point on the map. We'll then create a levels layer and using that we'll pull our blacks out to 1600 uh, grayscale value. Why 1600? Because I know from previously checking that 16, a, a K value of 1600 will give me the 50 meter base elevation that is uh, where it is downtown Thune. The crossed guides here mark right downtown Thune. So let's go ahead and do that. First we want to bring in a adjustment layer for threshold. We'll adjust our threshold until we have only the smallest white points on our map. So I know just from familiarity working with this map, this is Stockhorn, this is Neeson. So we'll put another set of guides right here to mark that location. Don't need our threshold anymore, so we'll just get rid of it. Bring in layer, new adjustment layer levels. We'll set our black point. I'm just going to pick some place out here in the middle of this lake. Then we'll set our white point and we'll do it right down here on that mark. I'm going to place a color sampler tool on my downtown Thune position. I'm going to make sure that that is set to 16. That always reverts to 8 bit. So you always need to check that and make sure that it is set to 16. I'm going to use this same levels adjustment layer and I'm going to drag out or draw out my blacks until I hit 1600 or as close as I can get to it. There's 1671, that's probably as close as I'm going to be able to get. I'll merge those layers. Now let's take this map. What we've done here is we've found our highest point. We set that as white point, set our black point, and then we just to give us the full range of black to white. And then we set our elevation to 50 meters in this downtown area. Let's pull this map into the City Skylines map editor and see what we get. We're in map editor. Let's import that height map that we just created and see what kind of results we get. Turn off the fog so we can see what we've got. Now, having worked with this map, I can see that we're getting some flattening in some of these ridges that we probably don't want. Some of it's going to, you know, and for some people, this is this map's going to be fine for them. I mean, it looks, we've got good detail. It looks halfway decent. It's not bad. Let's check our downtown area and see if, in fact, we do have 
50 meters in this area. We're at 52.22. We're within two meters of where we want to be. So that's close enough for what we can accomplish in this game generally. I mean, this would work fine for a for a game map, but my goal is to try and achieve a little uh, better scale. Uh, let's look right here at this guy and see how high that is. That's 126. Let's go around on this map and check a few elevation points and see how they compare to what they should be. Uh, let's take a look, look at Spice Ridge in real life. Its elevation is 706 meters at the very top of that. Based on the calculations that I showed you earlier, that should be 196 meters in game. Right click on that point, it's 126 meters should be 196. So you can see what's happening is by just selecting our highest mountain peak as our white point, we are crunching down the entire map. Let's do one other point. I have it. Here is Mound Train Runs Under, which is this, because there's a train tunnel that runs right underneath that. It should be 358 meters. It's 252. So, we're quite a bit short. Now, as I've said before, this map would be just fine if you're not concerned. In fact, there could be an argument made that this map would be better for gameplay because it doesn't have as dramatic uh, elevation changes uh, in the map, so it's flatter. So, you know, an argument could be made that this would be better for gameplay. Uh, and you could say, well, you know, no one's going to notice the difference between those elevations. Here we're down on the ground, you know, maybe that's good enough. I'm going to try and be a little more, I would like to try and create these areas where we're going to be building cities and laying roads and whatnot, that these places reflect the same changes in elevation that uh, occurs in the, in the actual location. So let's try that and see what we get. I'll let you be the judge as to which way to go. Maybe we'll learn something along the way either way. Next time we're going to break up the height map into multiple discrete areas, introduce the street map into our height map, establish multiple elevation points, color grade each discrete area separately, and blend areas into one consolidated map and bring it into the map editor.